a new month. It's a new season of prayer and fasting. It is a new, uh, new half of the year. It is not a happy new year, but it's a happy new half of the year. And uh, I am blessed to be in your presence this morning. Uh, I just want to take you through a journey that uh, I took myself as I was preparing for this message. I went to, I almost traveled like the people went to Zambia because I visited many different destinations in my imaginations. I was not uh, moving physically, I was uh, moving in my imaginations and uh, I was looking for answers because there's something that uh, the Lord has put in my heart this year and uh, I keep on asking whether I am I'm able to do it or whether I am even close to what the Lord wants me to do. And uh, because I did not find the answers, I thought that uh, I may enlist other people on the journey so that we may walk together. And uh, my prayer is that uh, as uh, you, ca you become a life traveler like I am, uh, you allow today's message to help us to attempt to see whether we can uh, get the answers to this challenge. So when I, was pre when I was preparing, I went to heaven. Not in trance and not in a dream, but I took myself to the evaluative uh, seat of judgment. Because uh, the word of God tells us if we, can, uh, we judge ourselves through the word, we shall not be judged. So I stood before God. And but to tell you the truth, uh, by the time we finish. And then I went, it is the journey that I was taking. From heaven, I traveled all the way to my workplace. And I was uh, meeting my colleagues and my lawyer. Sikupata uh, answers, Bado. I walk, I took another journey again. I went to face my family as well. I looked at my family, I looked at my children, I looked at everybody that knows me. Those ones at least they were very sympathetic, they would smile a bit because maybe they know me. And then I took myself again to the church. I looked at my church leaders, I stood before my, my fellow congregants in the church. And uh, I'm still taking that journey, Bado Sijafika. So most probably by the end of the message or by the end of the day, or whichever way God uh, wants to give us the, the answers, we'll find ourselves there. But before we make the conclusion, I am saying that uh, let's allow the Lord first to take all of us through that journey that I went. And uh, together, we'll take a mirror and place it before ourselves and see whether what you are seeing and what I am seeing is what the Lord wants us to see. My name is Rachel Wambua. I'm born again this morning and I love the Lord. I know my kinsman Redeemer are somewhere around here and I thank God that you've come and even when I was doing the journey of my life, you are the people who looked like you knew me. So I am thinking you are around. And uh, thank you so much for coming to be here with me. I want to take this opportunity to thank Bishop and Mom for giving me this opportunity to be here. And uh, for being great mentors for us and allowing us to practice what we're learning from them. I also want to thank the pastoral team and uh, the church leadership for giving me the opportunity to share the word. The title of my message today, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge. And uh, it's uh, about if uh, can God depend on me? Can God depend on us? Can God depend on you? And for today only, I will use the word trust, depend, reliable, faithfulness interchangeably. So when I say trust, I mean uh, dependence. When I say faithfulness, I mean the same word. So for today, they carry just one meaning. 
it's only for today after you after after this you can go to your dictionary and they can uh, have their usual meaning but for today it's that uh, they are carrying the same meaning so can god depend on me this is a question that i'm asking myself and the reason why i'm taking this journey i'm just uh, evaluating myself and asking myself whether it is possible for god to depend on me and i am wondering and uh, it is strange that the lord god who is so powerful the one who created the earth and the heaven can depend on us can depend on us and the reason why a powerful god can depend on us it's because there are things that god cannot do for himself such things is like uh, doing what the son of god came to do the son of god came to seek and save the lost and jesus christ went back to heaven so we are the hands we are the legs we are the extension of god that we can do this work and the reason why god wants to depend on us is that uh, we may take the word where he wants it taken that we may snatch the others from fire and that we may bring them to the kingdom of god before jesus left in matthew 28 18 to 20 i think we all know that is the great commission and he said all authority in heaven and on earth was given to him but he gave it to the disciples and the extension of those disciples of then it is us who are here it is us who are here and we are the people that who are supposed to continue that journey because if it was finished by then i think uh, i'm understanding that uh, god would have raptured the world and will not be here so what is it what does uh, being dependable mean and specifically dependable for christ uh in this moment is god able to count on us that's what we are asking ourselves if you are dependable we must be god is able to count on us to deliver on the assignments that he has given us and he has given uh, he has given me and uh, when we extend the borders of his kingdom we are getting closer to what god is expecting us to do and i know very well the times that we are living in it is very uncommon for many people to be de- dependable for many various reasons for what is happening but for us as christians loyalty at working standing on the gap at all times should be our portion because we can't afford to be like the like the world so the lord expects us to lead his flock to the green pastures where he himself has led us and so that that is a more or less like what we'll be discussing this morning and because we want to be dependable dependable is an action word it is a doing word and because it's a doing word we need to be knowing what is it that uh, how can we be found dependable because if you are not uh, if you don't know what you are doing you can't do it so we have to be doing it and to do it is that uh, being dependable i don't think uh, after six months we'll say now we are fully dependable it's a journey but we check the milestones of what we are doing we can't keep on saying that uh, i think i started being dependable two years ago and today i'm okay sasa mimi nimefika i can do it but it's a way of striving each and every day for us to be able to be there so how are we going to be independable what are the things that we are supposed to be doing so that we can be independable to god to others and by the way being dependable to people as well is a way of being dependable to to god because what we do to men is uh, what we, we do it to god and one of the things that we should be doing for us to be independable is doing what we have done today attending to church every day you might be wondering why do i have to go to church every day that's one way that god will expect us to be dependable to him according to the acts book of acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the early church the disciples were very dependable 
And uh, we read that they continued steadfastly in the uh, apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking bread and in prayer. Where were they doing it? They were doing it in their homes and they were congregated like we are today, be, we, listening to the word and listening to the apostles. And the Hebrews uh, 10.25, it tells us not to give up the meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let's encourage one another and all, and all the more as we see the day approaching. I remember one of my, my friends in Kazarani Zone, she used to tell us we work for God when it is still day. And this is the time that is still day. The darkness is coming. Let's come to church. Because our question is, when coming to church, is it important? And if it is important, what is it that we are doing? If you are coming to church every day, we have programs in this church. We go to sell every day, every week, once a week. We have Monday prayers. We have Bible study on Wednesdays. Are we independable? Can we be counted? When these programs were being made in this church, I am sure they were not made for visitors who are coming and say, every Monday we shall be praying so that when people are passing by, they will hear Deliverance Church is praying and they will come and uh, join in. These programs are made for us. Can we depended, be independent to come and attend these meetings? We have ladies' meetings that happen on a monthly basis. We have men's meetings that happen on a monthly basis. The question is, are we independable? Are we attending these meetings? It is once in a month for ladies. And from January to where we are now, we've done six months. And some of us has been, have been so busy, not even getting one day for six months to come and attend these meetings. These meetings are for us. We are, uh, we are dependable to God when we come here. When we come here, we are told. When we come, we are here, so we are supposed to be learning so that we might pass on what we are coming, what we are, what we are learning to other people. What is holding us? What is holding us? What is making us not to attend the weekly meetings? Yes, we are busy Monday to Friday. Saturday, you are still busy. Sunday, you are still busy. But then, Monday to Friday, we are not busy going to our workplaces. So just came to us, I mean, I'm not busy now, I'm not busy now, I'm not busy now. Are we too busy not to go to work? Today it's very cold. And I know, I'm not going to be supposed to go. Because when it is cold and it's a church function, but it's in a seed. It's a good thing to go to work. Tunenda kazini. Siku ya kazi, we, we harm ourselves with the jambas and we go out. But because ni kazi ya mungu, mungu ataelewa. Umeamuka leo na ukona headache. Si ile kubwa sana. Lakini hata ile kubwa, you go to, to work, unaomba ruhusa unaenda, unaenda hospitali. But leo umeamuka ukona unamua na kichwa, unasema, wacha kwanza nienda hospitali, Nita watch online. It's a good thing. But, ungekuja tu in the morning, you attend the first service, and then you wenda wapi? Wenda hospitali. Kwa sababu, it is in church where healing is being going to be released. It is here in church that we are going to get this healing. So my prayer is to be dependable to God. If you want God to depend on you, you also have to be accountable here. Because he has left his people here on earth. Mungu hata kuja hapa. And you listen, well, Rachel, are you dependable? I can only be answerable to you and to any other person who is here. Like, eh, mimi siku kuja Sunday service last week because of one, two, three. But it has to be a genuine reason. Si kwa sababu, maybe where you are, even when you are traveling, there is no church where you are. But if there is a church, please go. It does not matter. God is not limited to one place in Zimmerman. Otherwise, atunke kuwa na nini? Atunke kuwa na churches in this many other places. We should not be feeling like we want to stay home when it is time to go to, when it is time to, go to church. 
the churches are here for us and it is this is the only time that we can impact the other people the next thing that we can do for us to be independable is to preach the word of god just as we've been commanded in uh, mark 16:15 6, that go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature am i in asema sit e is it sit e or go e we are not supposed to sit down sit is so sit e is for us to sit down and take the back seat and wait for the others to do the work of god i know we are not apostles yet but they were not any different from us we are just the same as they were and there are so many ways of preaching the word of god maybe it's not uh, standing at the pulpit there's a way of inviting your people to church when you invite your people to church wakifika hapa like a bishop tells us wewe waleta kanizani kazi yako imeisha that is a way of preaching to god invite them to attend bible study imagine now with this digital era we like forwarding things even sometimes you can forward your photo but you forget like today there's a sunday service you can't even share that link with somebody that is a way of preaching the word of god there's somebody who is genuinely working today there's somebody who is genuinely unwell who cannot leave their beds today there are those who are also hold they cannot come to church at a time like this and then we can't even do something like that ours is just to follow i think i remember last uh, last week during the media service uh, the um, announcement they said if you have a phone kazi yetu ni kufollow tu ama walisema nini kazi yetu ni kufollow are we following even this teaching yes you might be busy you are from coming from work you miss the wednesday service are you following you miss church genuinely because you are sick did you go back and check at look at uh, what was preached the last the last sunday those are the things that we are supposed to be doing for us to be able to preach the word of god god depends on us for we are the tools that god uses to pass on his word to pass his love to people but someone she's like saying that sisi ni mali ya mungu kama we ni mali ya mungu unatumika haji kwa kazi yake kama we ni mali ya mungu na umejipeana ama when you surrender you are surrendering some things and you leave others that are not supposed to be surrendered we surrender everything to god and uh, it is a command because uh, we are not told please go and uh, take the gospel is go e which i don't think go e looks like uh, it's a, it's an option so it is a command for us to be preaching this word of god it is a command for us to stand and be counted because the word of god the go- god is uh, jesus is uh, depending on us because if we do not preach the word to the end then the end will not come unless we are holding it at ransom because we don't want the end to come but we cannot be here to forever so what we need to do is for us to preach the word of god and we preach it to every other every other end the question that i want to ask us is that uh, suppose the lord could only depend on me or you to do that work what would be the results what will be telling what will you be telling others will you tell others the good news will the church grow will you be building the campuses if you alone you are the one to be dependent to do this work that is the question that i want us to ask ourselves because uh, I still do not have answers I said I'm traveling so let's travel together um we are the stewards of the word of god and I know a steward should be found faithful my prayer for us is that uh, we may be found faithful so that at least we have done our part na wacha nikuibie siri atutaenda miguni ACE ni ile wizi mzuri i hope kuna wizi moja mzuri the the siri yenye nakuibia ni you don't need to be a great preacher you don't need to be a great teacher all you need to do 
is to be faithful and do the small bit that you can do. I remember when we were being invited to pick the pledge forms last, um, last Sunday, we were told just pick a portion of what you are going to build. So even in this word of God, pick just one portion. Wewe sema kazi yangu mimi ni kuleta watu kwa kanisa. Kazi yangu ni kuenda kuwalete kutoa nje kuwalete hapa. Wacha pastor Mili senda deal na wale wamekuja kanisani lakini mimi nimefanya nini? Nimefanya kazi yangu. So let's do the small that we can do, the small combined together makes a, makes a great impact. The, the other way of being dependable to God is giving as we are purposed in our hearts. And uh, giving in this sense is uh, one of it is giving financially. Can God depend on you to do your part, your financial part? When we are watching the, the services online, I think when we come to church, we feel that we are obligated to give offering. Now, I don't even know what a time we are when we had corona and we were watching online. You are to Jakuja church is queer to toys and daka. Umeanda church kweli? Ukiwa online unakuanga church. Utatoa sandaka wapi? Na hakuna. Ujaenda kanisa ya mtu. Umekaa kwa nyumba yako at the comfort of your zone and you are still uh, you've had. Are we are we being faithful with what we've been given by God? Ile siku ume uje, umekuwa mbali, hujakuja kanisani, wao unasema ah hii week mimi nime safe. Sandaka sio yako. Maya we are going. Kama hujakuja kanisa na hujakuja kanisa leo, hii kanisa ndiyo yako. Unapana utapana sandaka wapi? So usi make savings sa, sa, sa sandaka. Do we give services to each other? Because giving is only money, not only money. Do we give services to each other? Even actually, even in uh, giving our offerings. For those of us who are attend second service, uh, two services. Umetua sandaka, the first service. The second service, unasema, ay, nilitua sandaka hile ya kwanza. Sasa hii ya saa hii, mimi na pass. Are we passing giving offerings when we are still in, the, in, in church? What are we giving? Are we giving God sacri- sacrificially? Wale munapenda ndawa, ile ndawa ya java yani, sile ya kungojeka. When you go to Java and you take two cups of dawa, unalipia moja, unazama hiyo ingine ju nililipia kwanza, the second one did not give me the great satisfaction like I got the first one, so mimi nalipia moja. This is just the same way. These are principles of life. If you are coming to church day in, day in, and you have the, you have the potential to give, God has given you. God does not ask you to give what you have not been given. Are you able to give what God has given you back? Mungu anakupea lakini wewe unampimia. When you are asking for God, actually you say add me more, give me more. But when you are giving, unaanza kupima. We are also in the season of building. We are building our campuses. And uh, like for three Sundays now, we've been asked to pick our pledges and uh, we go pray and bring our pledge forms back. A few of us have, have, have picked the forms and they have brought them back. This is order to make our forms. This is part of giving. You are giving God what he has given back to you, what he has given to you. And giving, please note that God is only expecting you to give what he has given you. Another way of uh, being dependable to God is uh, helping others who are in need. As you remember the story of the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan was not uh, helped by the priests or the Levites. That is in uh, Luke chapter 10, 30 to 39. Uh, the people that he expected to be helping him, they did not help him. But now, the sword of the Good Samaritan is too far from us. Let's come down to our place where we are. Can God depend on you to help the needy? When is the last time you visited a sick member of this church or a family member who has been unwell? When is the last time as a cell leader you went to check on, on your member who is not well or a member who is going through something? 
The story of the Good Samaritan, it's not only for those who have wounds. Many people have some wounds that uh, we cannot see by our faces. There's hospital visitation that happens every fourth Sunday. When is the last time you went there? Prison ministry. When is the last time you visited those people? But when Jesus says, I was in prison, but you did not come, you'll say, when is this that you're in prison, God? This is the time for us to do that. Helping others is a way that God is expecting us to do so that we can be depended upon. Are we able to live for God? That's the other point. Are we able to live for God? Unajiachilia kwa mungu kabisa. Unajiachilia kabisa. And you see, I am just asking myself, if I was to stand before the world and represent Christianity, what would, be, what would the world see? What would be everybody see? And actually I'm standing here. You are not the whole world. But nikiwa hapa, mimi naona nikama nimesimama kwa stadium. What can others say about us? What can others say about us as Christians? This is expected of Christians because we have a different way of, stare, of, of, looking, uh, of, of being looked at because we carry Christ in us. If you look at your life, and I look at my life, I think we can attest that there is still a long way that we are supposed to go. And living for God means giving up ourselves and desiring God above everything else. That everything else that we are doing is secondary. God comes first. I think I heard, I think it's Pastor Millicent who was telling us, even when you sneeze, you sneeze what? You sneeze Jesus. Because that's what we've, we have, we have uh, taken to ourselves to be. And I want to tell us and, uh, or give us some characteristics of us to be dependable, how we should look like if we want to be dependable people. And uh, one of these characteristics is uh, being diligent, being vigilant, always being watchful. And uh, we should thank God for, the, for his salvation. Because were it not for salvation, I don't think any one of us would be here. But the question that we are being asked is, are we watchful? Is the ball dropping when it gets to our side? Because we are throwing this ball on this side, we are throwing it on this side. But ikifika kwako, is it the time that is going to drop? Being watchful, we are in the season of prayer and fasting. Are we, are we standing to be counted? Am I this prayer and fasting is only for the leaders? Is it for all of us? Because I think when it is being announced, it is for all of us. Being vigilant and being... Uh, being vigilant and being watchful and, uh, and being diligent. It means that as a cell leader, as a guide, you can be accountable for the people that the church has entrusted to you. When Jesus was uh, presenting his account to God, he said, the ones that you've given me, he did not lose anyone. But as we are given a cell with 10 people, and by the time we come back at the end of the year, Umebaki wewe na family yako. Are we being accountable? How are we treating the people that God has given to us? When we are given these people by the, by the church, we are being given to the, them to us so that we can be the representative of God in this, in this place. How much time are you taking to pray for your members? Are you praying for your cell members? Are you praying for your ladies' groups? Are you praying for any person that you're interacting with every day? Because that's the part of accountability that God is expecting us so that he can depend on us. The other characteristics of being dependable is being useful, usefulness. And uh, I have uh, three items here of usefulness is always being useful to God. Being useful to God means that uh, you are faithful, and like, uh, like uh, what the word of God says in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, it says, and the things that you've heard me, you've heard from me among 
many witnesses commit things to faithful men will be able to teach them uh, teach others also the reason why paul was speaking to timothy is because the word of god that we are being we are being given here it's not just for us it is for us to use with other people yes you are coming to church faithfully but you are not preaching this word unaweka 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 unajiwekea there's an overload of everything. Utakuwa na mingi sana, then utapeleka wapi yoyote. The thing is that we must be faithful, we must, we must be faithful and, truthful and uh, fruitful. If you are not passing this word, we are just faithful, but we are not being truthful. The other word on that uh, same is uh, useful to your household. First Timothy 5 and 8 says, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than a believer. This goes to every one of us. God has blessed us in different ways, and we have some of our relatives who are going, they have no food, they have no school fees, they have nothing, but we are not providing for them. We are being called upon to do that. We should be, another characteristic is, uh, characteristic is to be confidence. Confidence is uh, to be fearless and not easily intimidated. And uh, this, I remember the story of uh, Joshua and Caleb in Numbers. Numbers 14, 4 to 7, they were Moses' uh, spies and they were sent to go and spy the land. And there were 12 of them. And when they came, the bigger team gave a different, uh, gave, uh, a different uh, story. But Caleb and Joshua stood their ground and says, uh, let me read verse uh, 6. But Joshua, the son of Nam and uh, Nun and Caleb, son of Jephna, who were among those who had uh, explored the land, tore their clothes and say to the entire Israel assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. When the others said that they looked like grasshoppers, then they saw a good land that they explored. And this is the question that we are asking ourselves. Are we able to stand fearlessly and defend the word of God? Are we able to stand fearlessly and say, this is the member of my church and I don't think they can do that? Because the Lord is expecting us. We are not just going to be doing things because they are favoring us or we are feeling comfortable doing them. They risked being stoned. And I think the, the punishment then was being stoning. They risked being stoned because they were two versus ten. Can you imagine? And they said, this one, they were dependable people. They stood and they said the land was good. And because the land was good, they did not want to do it because out of their comfort zone. Yes, the giants were there, not because the giants were not there, but they had the backup from God. God has brought them from, uh, from Egypt, and they knew that Lord, the God, God can do and can fight for them. So they stood by what was right. They risked to stand uh, this wrist and stood by the truth, and uh, they, they, it happened that um, because of that, the Israelites later... Later, they moved to the land that was given to them. You can imagine the Lord had already promised them the land. And then when they get there, they say that they can't, uh, they are giants. So where were they supposed to go? Stay in the wilderness and there's no water. There was nothing. They could not feed anything. Were they, were they supposed to go back to Egypt? I think because that's what they had said. They were preparing to go back to Egypt. And my prayer is that the Father, that the Lord has brought us in Christianity and everything that he has done, that we are not going to go back to Egypt. The other, the other point is uh, truthfulness. We need to stand by the truth that uh, nothing is going to cause us to be dishonest. And I think uh, we've had these uh, people, who are not, people who are honest are not fitting in our society. But we are not those people who are supposed to be fitting in the society. We are supposed to lead the way and show what we are supposed to be doing. Um, I want us to, to, to share something else on, uh, on how, uh, on uh, some of the small foxes 
those small, small little things that are causing us not to be dependable on God. And uh, I'm just thinking of uh, our workplaces, because all of us like our workplaces, because that's where we get our paycheck, that's where we are able to be in Nairobi, and I, I am not sure whether you are not, people who are not working, and they are not children, whether they are able to be in places that are not their home places, when they have no jobs. And uh, some of these, they are very small things, they are not big things, but these are causing us not to be dependable. One of them is, um, I'm taking a scenario in the workplace, and I'm thinking, I'll start by saying a dependable employee is the one who goes to work every day, being there on time, doing the right things when they are supposed to be done, and uh, discharging the assignments the way they are supposed to be done. And uh, those are the people that every employer is, uh, is looking at. But uh, we also have this other category. And those people who are good employ employees, they don't need supervision. And I think we've seen that even in the advertisement. Uh, you can work without supervision, you tick. I can be counted to deliver, you tick. You are going to work under is it stressful conditions or something like that, you tick. But then when you get to that workplace, the question is, are you going to be counted? Or you'll be part of the people. When I started working, uh, uh, internet was not very much. This is a long time ago, in 2001. That's when I started working. And uh, the only way we would uh, pass time if you did not work, have work was to play cards. So you come your generation, you go, uh, play cards kwa, kwa, my, kwa um, desktop. Today it is Facebook. Today is TikTok. Are you using a lawyer's time? to play those things. Are you doing your Twitter, your personal Twitter, at the time of the, the office? And even using the office resources, because the internet is not yours that you're using in the office. The laptop or the machine that you're using is not yours. And the time that you're using, because the moment you get to your employer's office, the time belongs to the employer, it is not yours anymore. Are you able to be counted? Are you able to be counted? If you come closer home, many friendships, friends, people who have been friends for long, friendships have been just been ruined by a small thing called gossip. Malice, just wanting to do something which is not right for others. Gossipers are not dependable. Those who engage in this behavior, actually it's found in, uh, I think it's Romans 13. It, no, it's Romans 1 from, 30, from verse 29, about there. When we are doing these small things, when we are painting other people to look different from the hair, are we just practicing what God wants us to do? Gossipers just found, just like looking at faults, looking at failures, if you are down, they want to keep you down there, embarrassing you. But the question is, what are we gaining? Are you still dependable? Another small thing that we are doing to ourselves is, um, I just want to ask myself and yourself, has someone helped you to start a small business? A big business, a small business? Have you asked your circle member to guarantee you to get a loan? What has happened when we did that? Did you borrow money from the circle and the bank? And then, when things went the way they went, you ran away. And you left your garanda to bear the cost. Because it is your garanda who is supposed to pay, pay for that. Are we being dependable? That's not a big thing. It's a small thing. I called a friend of mine. I asked Sarah to go and guarantee me for a circle. But when... I know things are not going right, or maybe I don't know the intention that most people have, but you leave it like that. Are you a chama treasurer? Are you a chama treasurer? You've not been able. I think it's merry-go-round. It happens so much with the ladies. I don't know whether men have uh, merry-go-rounds. And we are 10 of us. And I am number one. And Mekula number one. Then you go and disappear. Where do you go to? Are you being dependable? It's just a small thing. It's not a big thing. 
but are you dependable? And are you being used to borrowing money from the mobile apps? It's a small thing. Nobody knows. It is very small. And the moment they call you again, unatupa yo simu, unachukua simu kadingine. Kuna Sayatel, I think, kuna Tala, kuna Nani na Nani. How are we being dependable? God does not desire us to do those many big, big things. God just desires us to do small things. Just, but by the way, all is not lost. All is not lost because you are here, and that person that you borrowed from is here. The person mwenye ukulipa and niyake akohapa, and there's a way of doing it. You just go back to them. Be honorable. If you want to be honorable, and actually forgiveness starts when you ask for it. Be honorable. Go to this person and say, I started this business. Na pesa ikajikula. I don't think pesa inenanga wapi. Pesa ikaingia mahali. So because you do not have this money, usiende hivi ukiona rafiki yako. Just go straight to where the person is. No muambie, nitakulipa. The moment you say utalipa, at least you have started redeeming your name. We are the people who are causing. Imagine, I am a cell leader, and I ask my cell members to throw a pesa ya merigo round. And then, na disappear nayo. Uyo member atatoka church. I zema misi, yesi enda yo church, bishop wao, wao cell leader wake, wao wote wanaiba pesa, wanachukua pesa zetu. Just go and redeem yourself. All is not lost. All is not lost at all, at all, at all. And uh, as we are coming to a conclusion, I want to ask ourselves, where are, we, where are we finding ourselves in this journey? And if any of those things that are causing us not to be dependable, we have seen ourselves in one of those things, there's no need to justify. Actually, there are many excuses that we can make but the good thing is to ask God to help us because if we are not dropping those small things, there's no, way we can, there's no way we can get to where God wants us to be. And I want uh, to ask us to arise. And um, as uh, we are arising, I'd mentioned somewhere that... Uh, I would want all of us to take out our mirrors. I think everybody has a mirror. And uh, as uh, we are looking at that mirror, I want us to reflect. I want us to reflect and we see what is it that we are seeing in that mirror. If you have the... I can see mine here. Uh, if you have that mirror, I want us to ask ourselves, are you happy with the reflection that you are seeing in the mirror? Because actually, in life, the difficult person to convince is the person that you see in the mirror every day that you wake up. And today, I'm asking ourselves, are we going to allow the word of God to change us, to drive away those small, small things that are causing us not to be dependable on God? Can the church... Can your society, can your family, can any friend of yours depend on you? Just look that at that friend on the mirror and see whether that friend of yours is able to, to depend on you. As you are looking at him, do not confront. Just look at him and reflect upon yourself. Would you want to surrender to God? Because personally, when I looked at that mirror, there are so many things that I did not like about what I saw. This is the right time for us to lift up our hands and we surrender to God because what we have seen and what God is expecting of us is different. It is very different. And to start this way of reflecting on yourself is to judge yourself against the word of God. You can only judge yourself against the word of God if you know the word of God. You can judge yourself against the word of God if you have accepted that God as savior of your life. Could there be anyone who wants to give their life to Christ? Worship team.
let me invite the worship team. Do we have anyone who would want to give their life to Christ? We are going to sing one song. And as we are singing this song, I want us to reflect and look keenly at what we are seeing. And as we are looking at this, I want us to reflect from the book of Romans 14, 7 to 8. You can put it on the, on the, the screen. It says, for, no one, for none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. But if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. There is no condemnation today. Yes, we have done so many things. We have, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, done the things that we are not supposed to do. Nobody would, uh, would, is able to depend on us at our current situation. But I'm praying at the end of the reflection, we are going to amend our ways. We are going to ask the Lord to change us because we need each other to walk in this journey. We know we can trust God. He never lies and he always keeps his promise. The question is, can God trust us? Can God depend on us? The burden may feel heavy, but the Lord is here this morning. Come and exchange the burden for his yoke, his light. I want us to sing this song that says, I know the Lord will make a way. And uh, as we are singing that song, I would want to invite the ministry team so that they can pray with us. They can agree with us. Because we have reflected on our we have reflected on our lives, we have reflected on ourselves, and for me all I can do is to ask God to help me and release these small foxes that have held me, that I can't move forward, I can't stand still, I don't want to be dodging and avoiding my friends. I don't want when the time comes and I, like I told you I took the journey and I stood before God. And I did not, I could not even say anything. This is time for us to stand and see. We are making amends. We are able to look at our families. We are able to look at our church members. We are able to go to our workplaces and we can be counted to be the Christians that we have not been or we have not practiced to be.